I guess we could start with a roll check just to who's available and who's not tonight. Everybody but Kuz. Um, Avery's minutes is up to 25, uh, as is Rondo's, and um, yeah, so everybody's in. I, I'm sure you were watching Hawks tape. Not sure if you got a chance to watch LeBron's son, but did, did, what did you like him to be able to go to that, just considering kind of what he's given the team uh, this season? Of course, we're, we're trying to create a family atmosphere, and you know, I've encouraged all our guys to, you know, they have video clips of their their kids, you know, doing things in sports that are neat to share with the, the group. Uh, I've encouraged our, our guys to do that. So I mean, if there's an opportunity uh, like that for him to see his son play, uh, we're 100 percent behind it. Uh, Frank, just what have you seen from the Hawks uh, the last couple of weeks? Uh, you know, they're competitive. You know, they haven't they've pulled out a lot of wins, but you know, they've shown shown flashes of improvement. Um, you know, the two games that stick out to me is you know two road games against two playoff teams, Miami and Indiana, uh, where those teams needed overtime uh, to to get the victory over Atlanta. So. Um, you know, we know if they're playing them to that level. Uh, we just came out of Miami, so we, we, we know how good they are. Uh, if they're playing those, those teams to that level, we know they can beat us uh, at home in, the, in their own building. So, you know, we got to make sure we come out and be at our best. You've been so key at, at just staying in the moment, right, the game of that day. Uh, do you think about the road streak in any instance of it, just a, a thing, another motivational tool, or do you try to leave it out? Well, I'm just I'm glad we're, we're winning games, you know, and having success, but, you know, it, it really – you know, we talked about this morning that that big win in Miami the other night doesn't mean anything if we don't get this one. You know, so um, we're not talking anything about that other than you know what games the brought us. Coach, what have you seen out of Trey Young and his jump from year one to year two in this league? Well, I see him getting double teamed every single night, and he's still putting up 29 points per game, which is crazy impressive. And um, you know, the assist totals. The thing, uh, you know, as I study him more each time you play, play, um, you know, a young player like that. You know, you get to study him more, and, and I'm just impressed with his, his passing. You know, he's got a great knack, he's got great vision, and you know, everybody, obviously everybody talks about his range, but um, his passing is what sticks out to me. Frank, you're keeping LeBron's minutes right under 35 a game. Is that is that intentional? Is that the line of demarcation you're watching? Uh, my line of demarcation is uh, playing him as little as possible to get the win. You know, and uh, just try to keep a, a smart number uh, in mind. Um, you know, obviously there's there's times we're going to go over it, but you know, I think if, if I could get him average in 34 minutes, um, you know, I think that would be probably the ideal situation. Uh, not that there's ever a game that you want LeBron to take off, but you know, he, he was questionable for today. Obviously, flying to and from Columbus, is there any sort of instance in a situation like this where you think, hey, maybe if we need to get him rest, we can get him rest here, or is there are there games where you're thinking about that kind of thing? Yeah, he knows that um, you know we're open-minded and uh, even encouraging him to uh, to look for smart opportunities uh, to recharge the batteries. And um, but we're respecting what he wants to do, and he wants to be in there, you know. So um, like I said, we're going to respect that. What's the balance? I mean, of, of trying to protect a guy from himself a little bit, where he's so competitive, and if he wants, let's say he wants to play all 82, I don't know if that's where he's at, but like I mean, be being smart and overriding him if if necessary. Yeah, it's. Um, you know, it's it's a fine line and it's a balance and you know something that we talk about all the time and uh, you know take case by case, game by game. Frank, who sort of sets? I mean, when you guys have lost the season, it's been to really good teams. Um, who sets the tone on the nights where maybe you're playing a team that's struggling? That's kept this team at the same level at a consistent level, sort of regardless of the opponent. I think both LeBron and Anthony. You know, I mean. Um, Obviously, uh, you know, LeBron is the more experienced of our two. So, you know, to see him in some situations, you know, just come out ultra focused uh, in, in games against teams you know, who set 500 records, um, you know, that sets a great tone. But you know, Anthony's consistency is, is off the charts. You know, and his uh, sort of play through anything that type of mindset that he's had this year uh, has been wildly impressive. And um, you know, I think it starts with those two guys, but. Well, look, we got a lot of vets on this team. You know, we got a lot of guys that would be cap team captains on most teams. You know, but because we have two pillars, um, you know, Anthony and LeBron are the, are the guys. But we have a lot of leaders on our, on our team. Uh, Frank, kind of two things with this. But what have you seen from Dudley stepping into some of those Kuzma minutes, and then also just what's next for Kuz trying to as you try to work him getting back into the lineup? Uh, well, with Duds, um, he stays ready. You know, and that's that's part of the job description. Uh, with with Jared Dudley and why we signed him, it, you know, it was a role that uh, with Kuz uh, being one of our, our our best players that 
you know, um, the job description was you, you got to be willing to, to go um, in the volumes of games without playing, and getting the MPs and trying to stay ready. You know, and um, you know he signed up for that. Uh, he's showing great speed and, and athleticism when he's out there and driving the basketball hard to the basketball. Well, maybe not to great speed, you know, but readiness. Yes, yes, he's definitely showing readiness. Um, and what was your question about Kuz? <laughs> just, uh, just kind of what's next with the angle? I think it's the third game he's missed now. Yes, just uh, you know, continue to see how it feels each day. You know, we want him to feel 100%. So um, he feels like it's behind him, and then uh, we start re reintegrating him. You think you can play on this trip? Uh, possibly. You know, like I said, he's, he's literally just taking a day to day. You know, but we're willing to take a long-term approach to make sure it's behind him. There's so much talk about Anthony and LeBron, rightfully so, for your team's success so far this year. And the guy that's been passed around also. But do you think there's one guy that's kind of been unsung through this 26-game stretch that maybe <coughs> we don't realize their contributions either on or off the court? You know, that's tough to say one guy. I mean, we, we've had so many contributors, you know, and it's been we, – we, we have had like a – you know, different guy, different guy every night. Uh, you know, type of approach with you know, who's going to be your third and fourth guy that, that makes a big impact. You know, um, you know, Alex has been great. You know, in his role up the bench, that's not un unsung with the attention he gets from our fan base. So <laughs> I can't consider him unsung. Um, KCP maybe. KCP stepped into Avery's role and he's killed it. He's playing terrific basketball. Um, you know, but Avery set the tone for the season the way he started. You know, the way you came out of the, out of the gates on the defensive end, our centers, you know, all, all these guys really can, you know, can be considered that. Frank, uh, LeBron was talking last game about being challenged and, and pushed out of uh, passivity by AED and DeMarcus and um, guys have talked about the culture of accountability. Is that something that stands out to you as unique of, of this group at, from other groups you've coached or is there some way in which a special wing you should see that manifest? Uh, I think it is a little bit unique with this group because you know you, you don't always have uh, you know enough guys with an, or, or enough players that have enough juice to call out your best player or to challenge him the way our group does, you know, or, or, or your, your best player have two best players that can push each other, you know, in that regard. And um, you know, a lot of teams don't have that. It's you know, it's a star player and a bunch of role players and. You know, it's just not just doesn't carry the same weight with those messages. But I think our group is different in that regard. Hey, NBA fans, Kelly McGill here. If you like that last video from Fanatics View on YouTube, be sure to subscribe down below for exclusive NBA content.